Hey guys, and welcome back to another Trek Yards breaking news kind of thing. We're going to talk about Klingons today. Discovery Klingons. As always, I'm Captain Foley. I'm Commander Cookings. Ooh, a controversial topic we are delving back into, Stuart. Oh, dear. Uh, indeed, indeed. As you guys know, in Star Trek Las Vegas, they had a panel with Neville Page and Glenn Hetrick, uh, two of the awesome gentlemen from uh, the show Face Off, which also mm. includes Michael Westmore, who we have spoke with, uh, talking about the... Klingon design for Discovery. Now, Neville Page worked on the Klingons for uh, the J.J. Abrams movie, and uh, he had some really fantastic designs that J.J. kind of micromanaged, so they had to be changed a little bit, which I know Neville wasn't very happy about. But And it is worth saying, if you watch that scene, there are Klingons with hair. We yes. just happen to see a bald one primarily. So yes. it's fine. And they're actually okay if you look at the side characters. Anyway. So... I wasn't there, unfortunately, to see the whole talk about the Klingons, but I wish I was. Uh, there is some fantastic pictures and things and an article re released about it, which we've taken a look at. And I am I'm more happy with the Klingons now, I think. I'm getting used to their appearance, and I kind of like the fact that they look the way they do. I'm going to get lynched by mm. some kind of Klingon what, mob what, at some point. What, what's that syndrome where you start agreeing with your captive captors? You're oh, the, uh, Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, you're forced in situation, and you're you're forced to like it eventually. It's not, you know, it's, it's not ideal. Uh, yeah, this is the Trek movie article. They broke down the panel into very very nice chunks, and I hope they get a lot of views because it's a really good article. It explains why, how, and who, and a very very interesting read. And we'll link to the description below. Um, so should we break down the why? I guess why they redesigned new Klingons or, or how do you want to hit this because there's a lot of good stuff to deconstruct here uh, let's just start from the beginning yeah why they redesigned the Klingons apparently this was part of uh, Brian Fuller's original directive to do this yep. uh, to have a new visual take on older aliens that we know so I mean I don't know if they're it's just pointing fingers at him because everybody hates the Klingons or if that was actually his vision I don't know I know he's not on the project anymore but I think he had said from the beginning that that was going to be the case. So that's why it's a new visual style. Simple as that. And the bald, the bald look was also yeah. mandate from Fuller. So that's, you know, a pretty hefty thing. Um, one thing that, that I think the best thing I take out of this article, um, beyond the different houses look different. Yeah. I mean, that, that is such a broad statement. We can't really put that into real context until we see it on the screen. But they said, the Empire is very big. They don't all grow up on Kronos. They don't all live on the same planets. And certainly there's different planets have different environments. So why would the cultures have evolved? So how the cultures evolved differently? Um, and we've tried to come up with cultural axioms for each house. So each looks different. The very cultural, it carries on a little bit. So what does that say to you, Stuart? And I'll say my points. That says to me, I think we're going to see a wide variety of different Klingons that aren't necessarily all you know, carbon copies of each other uh, because they're saying multiple planets, multiple atmospheres, multiple environments. So I'm thinking, you know, different, some, some substantially different than others um, just in their overall appearance. That's what I'm getting out of that. Yeah. I mean, you think about it's the Klingon empire. They expanded. We see multiple parts of the shows where they're trying to take planets. The fact that we only see a very, I mean, you can recognize a Klingon from any of the eras, and once we have the Enterprise explanation of why the, the ridges go, you understand why they're Klingons. They're all recognizable, they all link. There are variations within that, but Michael Westmore, who designed them all beyond Star Trek, you know, three, basically, mm -hmm. kept a visual continuity and consistency, and he's very proud of that. So we know they all are of the same, just some unique heads. And in fact, they had about 30 heads, like 25, 30 heads they just kept reusing. So, I mean, there is consistency because it's the same heads being used throughout the shows and seasons, even Enterprise. So there is consistency there. Yes, there might be a bald Klingon and not. But it says to me that, that yes, there's you know dozens of, of planets, potentially hundreds, or maybe the outer rim, just like Remans and Romulus. I mean, Romulans and Remans, I mean, the, Re the Romulans came from Vulcan. They sent people to Remus. Generations passed, they became Remans. They look like bats. I mean, Remans are Romulans just a thousand years on. I mean, that, they're not a different species. They didn't conquer the Reman people when they mm. came from Vulcan. Like, that's... Uh, am I right there, Stuart? Or are they, were they an indigenous race? I got the feeling that they were an indigenous race. Really? That maybe bred with Romulans, but... 
that's always been my thought because they, they look so different. That's what I assume. Well, it's because they spend all the time in the dark. I mean, you evolve, you, you know, surrounded. There's no light on, and they spend the time in the yeah, but in the you're mines. not gonna evolve that much over that amount of time. Unfortunately, well, I don't think that's how evolution works exactly. Well, I can depends, see them. Well, it depends how quickly you die off. If they're dying off because of the harsh conditions in the mines, you're getting through generations quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, yeah, if you, 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 know, have to, you have to make time for those changes to take effect. So if you're dying off fast, you're just going to die off fast. Also, they are change. aliens, so we don't know how quick their evolutionary scale is. Just <sighs> and radiation from the mines and all this crap. There's, there's I think, I I would seem odd to me if they were different species because it's just like we happen to colonize a planet with a moon that happens to have people on it. And we happen to enslave them. Happen, you know. Whatever. So that's what I got, anyway. Okay, well that's that's cool. We have different perspectives, um, which is good. Um, but if you know, <laughs> you t you take the Klingons. I mean, they're colonizing planets, but they're doing it by force. There's probably indigenous people in those as well. They, as you're right, they might be interbreeding with Klingons, but also, we don't exactly know how long the Klingon Empire has lasted for. If it's say five thousand years or whatever, you got people that went on this planet five thousand years ago. Five thousand. I mean, again, evolution is is longer, but harsh conditions. They're aliens. You can give explanations. Five thousand years into evolution, they're Janus three Klingons. You know, ooh, even even stronger warriors. Or ooh, we love those guys because they have heightened senses. Like they're not Kronos, they're not the Klingons, but they're like Martos three Klingons. You know, and each house mm. is different. Um, I I in my brain they've now said, and I hope this is true, that you will see original Klingons, you'll see TOS Klingons, you'll see these Klingons. Because every different place of the Empire look different. So you will have to see the originals. If the same Kronos looks like these ones, you can't say that based on what they're explaining here. The same Kronos Klingons look like this. We just happen to see the Kronos Klingons primarily. I mean, if you're looking at the flagship of the fleet, you're looking at the best arm, the best armed people, well, they might only be in the best situation. Like, you know, the guys that worked on um, Chancellor Garon's ship, they're going to be of the best houses. From Kronos or neighboring systems, yeah, you you won't necessarily see the ground troops as being these other ships. And how many people in the how many ships fight in the Dominion War, they could have other types of Klingons. So I see it as we'll see all of them. Um, that's my hope, because they don't they can't explain that if they all look this way, it undermines what they're saying, um, because they're saying they're not they're not ancient yeah. Klingons. They're saying they're just Klingons from a different planet. That's that's what I'm hoping for as well, but I have a sneaky suspicion we're not going to see any any Klingons we've seen before, like the smooth-headed or even the ones from TNG. I don't you mean the rest of Trek. Those. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see them, to be perfectly honest with you, because despite what they say about there being many different looks, I have a feeling it's all going to follow the same kind of new design style. And, we're, you know, even if maybe we see one in the background I'm hoping we see them don't get me wrong I really want to see them because I want to see the TOS ones I want to see the TNG ones and if they do that fantastic but I have a, the sneaky suspicion that's not going to happen but, uh, but, but, but Stuart they specifically said in the San Diego Comic Con panel that they know about canon that they respect canon they try and fit things in I mean they can't make those claims unless they actually follow them they brought those people in after they had already had everything <laughs> underway and filming those it's not difficult to put experts. hair on these people though we've seen so many images of them looking pretty pretty much better um now my 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 way i i think that you're right about they're going to ignore prime canon and just do their own thing is because later on in the in in, in the article and then the and then these led to the first signs of the of a generic klingon page explained that discovery klingons are bald because of their heightened senses on top of their heads the bald was, yeah. was mandated by fuller the generic Klingon. That's not implying the House of Kuvamach generic Klingons. That's just the generic Klingons implying that everyone's going to look like them, which would go in the face of what they already said. But that brings us to the, 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 the explanation to Bald. There's a specific biological reason. Stuart, what's that reason and does it make any sense? Slash, what do you think? <sighs> Heightened senses? <laughs> um... Yeah. that's a tough one it, it does make sense to me because they're, they are an alien race you want to see something new and innovative uh, as far as something not human uh, but really we hadn't seen this before so I don't know if I'm on board with that I mean it's a, it's a perfectly viable explanation if it's a new race but not for Klingons in my opinion 
I mean, they have the like the, the thing, the sensor thing or whatever it is. I don't know. They got a sensor palette, I guess. Um, so covering that up with hair, I guess, is bad. I, I don't know. Well, that's the thing. What, what, what were your thoughts? Like, my, I was not when I first read that. I was like, really. You're, you're- you're re retconning a huge difference in the, in the culture. I mean, they show a yeah. beautiful picture of some, of some head craniums here, and they're not remotely Klingon in terms of the back. I mean, that's not remotely what. Anyway, it says, Why are the Klingons bald? Being that the Klingons are an apex predator, that is, yeah. which makes sense. I mean, they, they became the dominant species of their planet, or I guess multiple planets. I mean, we don't know where. We're assuming Kronos is the home world, and we know what Kronos Klingons look like. So that the default Klingon looks like that. They then spread out and made an empire. Boom, there you go. But they had to be the we're the top, well theoretically the top species of this planet, whatever. One whale could kill us all, you know, in terms of if you're going to the sea or a shark. Yeah. Uh, are the apex predator? The design of their anatomy assumes they have heightened senses, specifically extrasensory receptors running from the top of their heads down to their backs. This was the impetus with Page and Fuller to sh- for the shape of their heads. This and they started with design the clown skulls. Now, obviously in TNG we see you know we've got scenes where Worf or other people take their clothes off. And you can see the, the things do continue down their, their spine. So we know that is existent, but we assumed that was just... Because we know they've got like a really strong vertebra, and we assume that was just part of their you know bone armour. There was no functional reason, because it's just like detail. But this picture implies that these holes in their head is like echolocation or some sort of other censoring thing. And as you already said, that means that every single head Klingon, including TOS, because they've all got hair, all of them have chosen either to not use those senses as their best warriors, or they're all a different Klingon subspecies that don't have that. Because if you're saying these Klingons need to be bald to use them, you're saying every other Klingon ever, except Chang, who didn't have that head pieces, did not either want to or have that ability. So you're creating a subspecies of Klingon within Klingons. And again, you can't explain the back head region, except it's a sub. Which is, I mean, that's a cool idea. I like the idea of the Empire being so varied. This planet, they evolved stronger, better, darker, more murderous, whatever. Uh, time evolved them, whatever. Maybe they're, maybe they're a proto-colony. You know, they, they went there, the very first explorers I ever of, from the Klingon homeworld, they went there. And because they were so far out, the, the Klingon Empire doesn't respect them. But yet they want to make a splash, so this is when the, the lead Klingon says, you know, screw this, we are the well strongest Klingons, you know, they just have this augment virus, they're all weaker now, we are the, we are clearly the most genetically enhanced Klingons, you know, we are better, we're not purebreds, we're better, and we want to unite the houses under our stronger leadership, you know, um, which would explain why technology looks so different, because they're on an outer colony, they do whatever the hell they want to do, they're not conforming to the Klingon norms, um, but like I said, as long as you see conventional Klingons, because those are what Kronos Klingons look like, I would be fine with seeing the spectrum from this to that. And I'm fine with this being the primary Klingon villain, as long as that's... I, mean, I, I think they've got half the explanation here. They just need to confirm its canonical making sense. If they're trying to retcon Klingons as saying, they all genetically advanced with bigger craniums for special detection that no one ever used ever, it's like, yeah, but you didn't watch Star Trek then. Because they're warriors, they'd use every advantage they had. <sighs> You're putting way too much thought into it. They're not going to go into all that. It's just new Klingon. But this they just said they had are. canon people linking to canon. It doesn't they just said matter. They, they don't. They're talking about timeline events. They're not talking about the reimagined re- new look of the ship, uh, ships, and 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 of the those cultures. Yeah. I guarantee you, the canonical people, canonical people are just there to. Oh, this timeline thing doesn't make sense. You can't do that. Because they've already screwed it up with the reimagining, so you, all the thought you just put into that whole thing is pointless. And I know that's our job; it's what we do. Wouldn't um, that wouldn't that be great, though? It would, and it makes per- it would be a perfect fix for everything for the real well, Star Trek fans. But it, I mean, it's like the Andorians. You suddenly invented the new white Andorians out of nowhere. We never mentioned it was a subspecies. They didn't, didn't look that different, but pigmentation is quite important for Andorian. They're humans with. Yeah, but to te- assume that all all Andorians are blue is ridiculous because not all humans are white, not all humans are black, so mm-hmm. you can't go in knowing that you know there's not another color of mm-hmm. Andorian. Um, sure. And so, I don't know. I think it's one of those they drop the ball things and they're trying to. <laughs> 
they're trying to make it really cool so that people go, oh, yeah, it's really cool. And I don't think it's going to work. I mean, I've, the new Klingons, like I said, the, their appearance is growing on me a bit more, but it doesn't mean I'm happy with it at all. I just, it is what it is. That's what, that's the way they look. And that's why we've been told that's the way it is. We're going to have to accept it. And in like five years from now, we're going to forget all about it and just go, this is this, the discovery Klingons. So when we talk about the discovery Klingons, they have these sensors. When they do, when we talk about regular other Klingons, they don't. It's and TOS Klingons, they have the, the virus that makes them look flathead. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you got. Unfortunately, heroism, that's that's the realism of the situation that we're in. Um, so the over explanation and yeah, that would be great. I mean, that's something that they should incorporate into the storyline to actually answer the questions, if they're if those canonical people are doing their job. But I have the distinct feeling that's not the case. <laughs> I really. I, I, I just want to give Neil Page and this guy credit. We've seen them in Face Off because I watched that at your at your house. You know, he's got experience of O nine, but of uh, Into Darkness anyway. You know, I want to give them credit. They're talented designers that have done lots and lots of work. And while you know, if you're being told like JJ said, you know, you can't do this like Trek, these certain reasons. I mean, your boss is telling you to do one thing. You can't. Like, I've done CG for for people, and they've told me to do things. I'm like. Uh, well, you're the boss. I mean, it, it's your job to make it look a certain way. Um, yep. So you can't blame those. I just want to make sure that, you know, they obviously, they've created this whole aesthetic. I mean, the, the torchbearer suit is gorgeous. The knife is gorgeous. I mean, designs are looking really good. It's just that we've got to have cognitive dissidence to be away from, you know, the Star Trek that we've had for not 50 years because it, obviously they retconned things out. But in terms of timeline, we've had these Klingons for a hundred and you know seventy years or something <laughs> you know a uh, lot of history that Klingons look like that again is, is Star Trek a TV yeah. show or a, or a universe that has a timeline um, I'll make one more comparison before we, we end is that you know people saying why is canon important um, and I'll say well look at the look at the superhero films look at Marvel before the, the they were having this continuity this 20 film arc films were doing fine, they were doing okay, each one was separate, they kept rebooting things, they were fine. As soon as you start having this continuity, it's Iron Man, the Captain America, and then suddenly it's a big Marvel film, they're making billions. Because people loved things linked, they loved, you know, they could throw a random genius into Spider-Man, but they threw Iron Man in, and guess what, people are going to go just to see him. It's the continuity, it's, it's, the, it's the same thing again, but in a different context. It's, it's a universe of building that's taken them 20 films, and guess what, they're making billions a year. They haven't had a flop yet because of continuity. If they were just doing random films that didn't connect, you'd have something like this, something like that. But guess what? I will go see Spider-Man New One because I love Iron Man. You know? Tony Stark. If you give... You know, Star Trek has continuity and that gives it the depth. You can have a good TV show, but the depth is what gives it that stuff you can really bite your teeth into. When you throw that away, you have a flat show that won't... Have, might have a legacy like Firefly because it's got its own thing, but it won't have this big legacy of big whatever. And that's why a lot of people are saying Discovery is going to fail because of that exact mindset that they haven't linked in close enough with the original, but they don't care. They honestly don't care. They're using the name Star Trek to pull in a new audience. And uh, yeah, they're just, they haven't considered that. I don't think personally, I don't think discovery is going to fail per se. It's going to be its own thing. Um, this whole thing with Nicholas Meyer off doing another project. We'll see. Who, who knows what that could be. It could be a movie. You, you I know, know, I think it is. I think it's a cup. And they said, here's a TV show. And they said, right, we're going to pour in 25% canon, the, the Trek, just to make sure we've got it, like a squash, put the concentrate here, then pour all the rest of the Discovery We Have Ideas in, and it's really dilute Star Trek. Yeah. It's just dilute Star Trek. It's like, it's sort of it, but it's not going to quench that thirst. That's a really good analogy, I think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely it is. I'm going to have a drink now. There you go. Cheers. I, ne I never drink in a formal show, so uh, there you go. But yes, lovely thought. Great they put in. I hope my idea becomes fruition because you explained it basically perfectly. Almost, but okay. I, I no, I, I'm 100% with you. I hope it does, but I'm sitting here going, it won't. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, we, Time will we'll, tell. We still love ship designs and we'll talk about ships. Yeah. So there you go, guys. <laughs> kind of discussion about the Klingons and how they fit into the new Star Trek Discovery. Uh, and yeah, Neville Page and uh, Glenn Hedrick are brilliant people. They do fantastic creature design. They did a fantastic job on the new Klingons, but 
whether to speak to their, them being Klingons or not is another story altogether. So, and I, th- I think it's fair to say they're not ancient Klingons. I think we can now rule that out based yeah. on what they're saying, which yeah. is, yeah. So, but anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Love to hear your comments below, and don't forget to hit that like button and share this around where you can, because you know other people are debating this whole Klingon thing as well. So, spread the word. Mm-hmm. And if you want to support us directly, tell us to make more shows on Discovery, on you know the normal ships we look at on an every single week basis. Like seriously, guys, we are ship guys all the time. We don't stop. We've got all the Eagle right here. Mm. Ship guys. And I've seen his house. He's got ships everywhere you look. You can support us in two amazing ways: Patreon, our monthly donation service. You have a little bit each and every month to help us keep the lights on and such. You know, tw- or even twenty-five bucks. I mean, ten people give twenty-five bucks. Made a huge difference to our monthly outgoings and ingoings. Or a one-time donation at trekkers.com. Say thanks, say that's a great show, give us even 10 bucks. Again, if a hundred of you give 10 bucks, it makes a huge difference. So be one of that hundred and support us with 10 bucks. That's right. And until next time where we have more discovery, controversy, debate, discussion, whatever you want to call it, or just a, a fresh look at a discovery episode or ship, yeah, we're your guys, exactly. so come back. But until then, we've it's done a lot of other Discovery stuff, so check it yeah. out if you haven't seen it. And we've got a whole ton and backlog of videos on ships and everything else for you guys to check out. So hope to see you in the future. Until then, I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Cummins. And we'll see you later. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.